if Deku was a Majin, part 3. Sorry if this gets out a little later than like the 7 o'clock ones where I do 20 minute videos, as it might be out 7.30 Eastern time for me. Now, both Deku and all of Class 1A just feasted on the re chocolate remains of the Nomu. This made Shigaraki run away. <coughs> As since he was now since he was now gone, the class celebrated by eating Nomu, the monster, which just destroyed all their evidence. But hey, it was good while it lasted. Now, when they were walking back, Deku was approached by Mina, none other than Mina. She asks him on a date. Zuku, being the cheery one he is, just says, What's a date? I have no clue. As she explains what a date is, as Zuku's just like, Oh, cool. Sure, why not? As they leave. Now, during that night, they go to a steakhouse. Deku orders the cheapest thing they have, which is just a half cut of steak. Not really anything too special. Half cut of steak for twenty dollars. Izuku looks at it as it as he says, Izuku make you chocolate. As he turns it into a twenty pound chocolate or like a three pound chocolate steak. Which would inevitably probably be worth like twenty five dollars making a profit out of that. As he now just started eating the chocolate as everyone's just looking around him like, why'd he go to an expensive restaurant just to eat chocolate? As Mina was enjoying a nice steak, which was probably the most expensive thing they have. Mina, being the absolute know-it-all of dating, knew that usually the guys would pay. So... She got the most expensive thing on the menu, which was a golden wrapped T-bone steak, which you guys will probably know from Mr. Beast's video. She ended up eating that with Izuku trying some, and ended up gold wrapping some of his chocolate because he liked the gold. Like <laughs> now, once Izuku, once they were done with that, the waiter came up and asked if they could do anything else. Izuku, seeing that they made chocolate items, he asked if they could make a chocolate diamond for him. They said, sure, obviously weirded out by the strange request. As soon as Izuku gets it, he takes a look at it, as he's like, Izuku, make you, make you not chocolate. As this chocolate diamond turns into a diamond right then and there, as Izuku just flicks it right at the guy as he catches it and he's like this is like a one pound diamond what the heck which that would probably cost over 10 million dollars for a one pound diamond that's my estimate now now they Mina thought that the th the date went great on the next day in UA they all announced that they would be having dorms, which Mina obviously put her hand up and asked if they were going to be in separate locations for boys and girls. Aizawa said yes, which saddened Mina until she had a bright idea, knowing that Izuku was probably too dense to understand what she was about to say. She asked if they could, if her and Izuku could have a shared room being in the middle, in between the girls and the boys' side. I saw well, just n not caring. He's like, yeah, sure, I don't really care. Just don't wake me up today. As he says, the dorm rooms are probably ready. Just go, go get your stuff and do it. I don't care. As they all leave to go get their stuff. Once they get back, they see the a bunch of buildings surrounding see a bunch of buildings surrounding the area. They go up to them to see that they are all of the dormitories for UA. 
They walk into the 1A dormitory to see it's massive and luxurious. Deku gets a key, which Mina follows him. He asks why she's following him and says, oh, they're sharing a room. Izuku doesn't really think much of this. He's dense as hell and doesn't really care. He's like, oh, cool. At least I get to be with the person that's just like me. Pink as always. <laughs> As they go to their room and decorate it with Izuku mostly just being with random items and a fridge. He likes cold chocolate. That's pretty much the only reason why he has that. They have a TV in the room and a king-size bed. Izuku just puts one thing down on his side that's not his mini fridge with a bunch of chocolate inside. And that would be his cape. Like his hero costume. He has like his hero costume with. That he's like, oh, sick. It's awesome. As he hops on his bed and falls asleep. When he wakes up, he sees that Mina's like entangled herself around him. And he doesn't care. He just gets up and walks. Walks out of the bedroom with Mina still around him sleeping. He walks over, and he keeps walking until everyone's just starting to ask him questions, like, dude, why is Mina wrapped around you? And he's like, huh? Oh, she is, huh? I don't really care. Apparently we're dating or something. I still have no clue what that means. Which, they were all kind of shocked by this, but half of them didn't care. After this... Th after this... All of Class 1A was told to go back to their classrooms. Once they get back, Aizawa tells them they have two weeks to train for the, the what's it called, the sports festival. Izuku is pretty hyped by this, and he's like, yes, I can finally train and show off my abilities. As he cracks his knuckles and speeds off to go train. Mina following shortly behind him, wanting to train with her supposed boyfriend. Now, after this two weeks of training, Izuku is pretty much significantly stronger. Not in too much of a bad way, but he still is significantly stronger than his normal self would be. Now, once they get changed into their gym uniforms, Izuku, instead of wearing... The top of it puts his cape around, which nobody really cares. He's like a superpowered deity that can destroy all men if he wants to, so they're not going to tell him otherwise. As everyone's kind of questioning his cape until Midnight says that the UA first year representative, please walk up, which is Izuku. He walks up pretty happy. As his cape swooshes in the wind, as everyone's like, why does this kid have a cape on? So, he says, I hope we all have a good fight, or I'll turn you all into chocolate. As he walks down and just licks his lips like, mmm, chocolate. <laughs> so he's like, I can't wait for one of them to screw up. <laughs> so, after that, Midnight announces that they will be doing a race for the first part after spinning a wheel and it landing on doing a race so so once they go ahead and get up to the starting line Izuku gets down into a Naruto run position as everyone's like what's this kid doing as soon as President Mike yells go Izuku just throws his hands back and just starts zooming he's flying so low to the ground as everyone's just so confused like What's this kid doing? Like, what? Is, how's he flying? Does this guy have some fi flying quirk or something? Oh no, this kid's overpowered already if he can fly at that top of speeds. As they all rush up to try and catch up to him. Now, they are obviously not able to catch up to him. So he ends up getting first place. Now, Midnight spins the wheel once more as it lands on a cavalry battle. 
Everyone cheers in the crowd as Izuku looks for a team. Since he got first, he has 10 million points. Mina being the only one to choose him as he picks up Mina and gives her the headband. As President Mike yells go, what, do you do? what does he do? He flies up all the way up until he... Until he cannot go anymore as they told him to stop flying. They don't want him to be too far ahead of everybody, you know? So, after they told him to stop flying, he goes down. And he's pretty low, but not too low to where Bakugo can just um, get up to him easily. As he just waits out the time until they're done. Once that, once that's over, Izuku just flights down as he got first place once again. 10 million points is very hard to get when there's not 10 million points out there in the open. So, after this, Izuku goes around, Izuku goes around back to the 1A stands, waiting for the next challenge, which Midnight spins a wheel, and it lands on the 1v1 challenge. As she says that Izuku and Shinso will be first. As Izuku walks up, Shinso says that it must be nice having a cool quirk and be very powerful. Izuku doesn't like this tone, as he pretty much gets angry. As he yells, Izuku make you, until he stops. As Shinzo's like, got you. As he says, walk out of the arena. But instead, Izuku walks forward. He keeps walking forward until he's down right by his ear. As he finishes, make you chocolate. As Shinzo turns into chocolate, as Izuku just takes a bit of his hair, where now he has hair that looks like Bakugo's from the internship, as he says, Izuku making that chocolate. As he pushes Shinzo out of the arena and just smiles at him, as he's like, I got chocolate hair now. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have messed with me or tried to do that. As Izuku walks back, waiting for his next challenge, which... Midnight announces that it will be Todoroki. Todoroki says that Izuku may be stronger than him, but he's still going to beat him with 50% of his power, which kind of doesn't make that sentence true. If he's stronger than him, he's not going to be able to win, but let Todoroki be Todoroki. You can't really stop somebody from doing something, saying something really stupid. If you got us now. But, Todoroki, Todoroki sends ice right at Izuku as soon as it starts. Izuku keeps on dodging until he puts his hands by his side. Yes, he knows the Kamehameha wave he created in this. As Izuku says, Kamehameha, as it breaks through the ice and ends up making Izuku making Todoroki fly out of the arena. Now, Izuku, being the kind person that he is, starts throwing the ice at people, and everyone just catching it, like, what's this kid doing? Until Izuku says, Izuku, make ice chocolate. As all the ice in the arena turns into chocolate, like, really nice chocolate, basically, that something Boo would eat. As everyone's just like, huh. As they start taking bites out of it, and they're like, Yo, this kid's sick. He just gave us, like, actual chocolates. Dude, I'm going to preserve this and sell it on eBay. Or thousands. <laughs> now, once everybody is done with that, done with that, it is announced that the final people is Izuku versus Bakugo. You can already tell by this... Bakugo ends up insulting Mina, calling her a pink bee. As Zuku gets mad at this, which he basically just looks like the boo on the thumbnail, as he, he just starts growing and growing, or like his stomach starts growing until he releases a massive scream. 
this sends Bakugo straight through a portal to right behind Izuku as Izuku just punches him right in the face, sending him flying out of the arena. This is the point where Bakugo's like, maybe I shouldn't have said that. All right. Never underestimate Izuku again. Oh, he's scary now. Wish I didn't do that. As he's contemplating his life. He's flying in the air, waiting for him to fall down. Now, Izuku is crowned victorious and the number one, or the person who won during the festival. He's pretty happy as he's smiling along with Mina, who jumps up and kisses him, which Izuku, being the first time, doesn't really know what to do until he kisses back. Now, after this, Aizawa says that they will be doing internships with random with people of their so choose. Izuku doesn't really know what to do until Aizawa, and Aizawa tells Izuku and Mina to come around. He says, all right, we're gonna need your hero names, so we can, because what we're thinking is that Izuki, since you're already powerful, more powerful than All Might, we're thinking that you can have, that you can have a full hero license until the internship ends with Mina as your sidekick or intern, as you'd say. Which Izuku's like, oh, my hero name will be Majin Buu, or Majin Izuku. That's my hero name, as. Mina says, Pinky. Yeah. So, after that, after that, they both walk away as Izuku's looking at his temporary hero license. Izuku ends up making a makeshift hero, hero place for the short while he, he her hero agency, with him being in being there with his sidekick as Mina. As he waits to get a call, which it's in Hosu City, if you guys want to know the location. As soon as he gets a call, he rushes off towards where it was. Once he gets back, he finds out that it was none other than... That it was none other than Todoroki telling Izuku that he has to go quickly as Ida is in trouble. Both Izuku and Mina jump up and start racing towards the alleyways as they know it was probably Stain the hero killer. As they know that Stain basically destroyed his brother. Like, Stain took out Ida's brother. They know this. So they start rushing to where it could he could be, which the only place they think of is an alleyway, which is correct. They find Ida about to be stabbed by Stain in an alleyway as they rush in as Suzuku fires a key blast, blocking blocking Stain from killing Ida as they both charge right in on him punching, or Mina and Izuku charge right in on the hero killer, punching him as he jumps back and charges a Kamehameha. He says, Kamehameha. Basically obliterating the hero killer's arm, or one side of him, basically, as the hero killer's like, how could this happen? as he passes out from the sheer pain that he was in. After this, after this, basically both Zuku and Mina go back to his agency, so they're all wondering what they should do now. They basically just wait for a while, and then it's over. They finished they finished their internships and once they get back, Aizawa says they're gonna have to do the finals early because they already have some pretty good experience. Mina is kind of scared while Deku just says 
it will be all right. And that's where I'm going to leave it off, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy What If Ticket Was a Majin Part 3. See you guys. Bye.